This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Imagine a new kind of dating show where one bachelorette will pick among four guys who let's just say all are friends and know each other well. Now instead of going on dates with the bachelorette, these four friends are simply going to pick who they think the best person is for the bachelorette. They're basically going to endorse each other. However, no one can pick themselves, but we will allow anyone to pick more than one person if it's a tie, and we'll assume everyone's being totally honest. So like, let's say Alex endorses Bob, meaning Alex thinks the bachelorette should definitely choose Bob among the other two. And on top of these arrows, I write the names of who endorsed that person above them to keep it all very visual. Then let's say Bob chooses both Carlos and David as a tie for the best, definitely better than Alex, so those each get one endorsement from Bob. Carlos says that Alex and David are tied for the best, so we'll write those endorsements there. And then David says that Alex and Bob are tied for the best. Now the question is, who should the bachelorette pick? There isn't necessarily a right answer, but we're going to see one way to obtain a numerical rank for each person where there's no ties. Something to note is that Alex, Bob, and David all have two endorsements each. However, Carlos only has one. So it looks like Carlos would be the worst pick, which we will find is mathematically true. But what about the rest? Well, let's look at Bob real quick. He was endorsed by Alex, however, that's the only person Alex endorsed. Meaning Bob clearly stood out as the best to Alex, and that endorsement should mean more than others. I mean, Bob was also endorsed by David, but so was Alex. So either one of those endorsements wasn't as meaningful, we can say. We'll soon see how this is the reason Bob is going to be ranked number one. Now, let me just pause real quick to say that what you're seeing is the very basics of how the Google algorithm works and how they rank web pages across the internet. It's a complex algorithm, but a big part of it is seeing which sites link to which others. If we just consider the bachelors from before as websites and an endorsement as a link from one site to another, which can kind of be thought of as an endorsement, then we have the basics of how Google ranks web pages. The ranks would just be like which sites show up first based on what you put into Google. But now let's get to the actual math so we can see some numbers associated with these ranks. I'll consider the nodes as websites from here on, and we'll just assume the entire internet is right now just these four sites. Okay, so first to mathematically represent one endorsement being more meaningful, let's say that each website can give out one point of importance. So like when website A linked to B only, it used all its importance or one point for that other site. But when website B linked to C and D, it gave out half an importance point to each. So yes, it must be split evenly. See, we're assigning weights to all the links. As in the more links a site sends out, the less meaningful each of them is. Then site C gave half an importance point to website A and D. Then the same thing with D linking to A and B. Now we're going to organize all these numbers in a matrix. Each row and column will refer to one of the websites, so I'm just putting the letters here to make things easier to follow. The first column will be the points that site A gives out. So it gave zero points to itself, one point to site B with that one link, no points to site C, and no points to site D. The next column will be who site B linked to. They gave zero points to site A, zero points to themselves, half a point to C, and half a point to D. The next column will say that site C gave half a point to site A, no points to site B or itself, and then half a point to site D. Then the final column says that site D gave half a point to A and B, then nothing to the others. Notice that the diagonal will always have zeros because you can't link to yourself. And you'll also notice that each column adds to one since each site can only give out one point in total. The rows on the other hand tell us who got the endorsements. Like site A got two endorsements, half a point from C and same from D, but nothing from the rest. Site B received one point from A and half a point from D, but none from the rest. And here you see the lowest ranked site, site C, got only that one endorsement from site B. By the way, no, the algorithm is not just adding the numbers in these rows. Yes, B got the most points in total, but that's not the only reason it will be ranked number one. I mean, you'll see A and D tied, yet one of them will be ranked higher, as we'll see soon. Now, the reason we picked one importance point to be given out in total is because these numbers now represent probabilities. 
Like if I go to website A and randomly click a link, there's a 100% chance or a decimal value of one that I will land on website B because of that one link. Once I'm at website B, if I randomly click a link, I have a 50% chance of going to C and a 50% chance of going to D. And this will just continue from there. So finally, here's how we'll determine ranks. If we spent a long time randomly clicking links, assuming equal time intervals between each click, what percent of that time would be spent on each site? Those percentages, which we'll add to 100 or a decimal value of one, will be the rank of each site, and we'll put those values in a ranking matrix called R. Now, to begin this internet search, you have a 25% chance of just picking one of these websites, kind of like our initial ranks. But now let's find the probability of landing at any given site after just one click. To do this, we're going to take our 4x4 matrix and multiply it by the initial ranks or probabilities. As many of you know, to multiply two matrices, you multiply rows by columns one at a time. Remember, this first row is all the points given to site A, or the chances of getting to A from any given site. So this dot product tells you the probability of being at A after one click. Think about it, this says you have a 25% chance of starting at A times a 0% chance of going to A from there since it doesn't link to itself. When you start at B, same initial probability, there's also no chance of going to A because there's no link. But if you start at C and pick a link, there's a 50% chance you get to A, and the same thing with site D. These are all the probabilities of just going to A from any site. So when you add those up, you have the total probability of being at A after that first click. It just so happened to stay the same at 25%. When we multiply the next row of all the probabilities of going to site B by our ranking matrix, we get 37.5%. Since everything was the same except you had that higher probability here of going from A to B, the final probability was of course higher. For the next row, we multiply and get a value of 0.125, and then the last leads to 0.25. These tell us the probabilities of being at each site after the first round of clicks. But I said we have to find the probability of being at each site after doing this for a long time, meaning we have to keep going and take our original matrix of probabilities, then multiply by this new ranking matrix to get the probabilities after a second round. One thing you'll notice is that the probability of being at C is actually higher now. And that's because in the last round you had a higher chance of landing at site B, and that itself links to C, so that probability went up. Then we just repeat, taking these new probabilities or ranks, and find what they'll be after a third click, where the numbers finally start to separate a bit. After many, many multiplications, aka a lot of clicks, the probabilities will converge to these values here, and these are the ranks of each site. We see that site B is ranked highest as expected, and C is the lowest. But also note that site D ranked higher than A, even though they both had two incoming links. By the way, another way to look at how we got these is we took our 4x4 matrix, that I'll just call A, and multiplied by those initial ranks. We then took that value and multiplied by matrix A again, then we did that again, and just kept repeating. So really, this was just a to the n times r. As n approaches infinity, the product reached an equilibrium of our final ranks. So now we can answer our question from before, of why did site D rank higher than site A, even though they each got two endorsements? It's because site D has a link or endorsement from site B, the highest rank site, while site A does not. Site B might be something like Forbes, very high ranked and getting them to link to you is like a big stamp of approval in the eyes of the algorithm, which is why D beat out A. So those were the basics, and now adding websites and links to the web just leads to changing the numbers or dimensions of a matrix. If site B now links to A, all we have to do is take our matrix and change the B column, where B will give out one third of its importance to three sites now. Then if we did all those matrix multiplications, these would be the final ranks. So as expected, A has surpassed D in rank since it got a new endorsement. But here's what's weird. Site A now has three endorsements more than any other site, yet site B is still ranked higher. 
That may not seem right. You might think A should be number one. But remember, that site only endorses one other site, B, which is huge on ranking. That importance of A is transferred to B, essentially, making it number one instead. I mean, B endorses A back, but it's one of three links that B gives out, so not as meaningful. See, it's not about links, it's about quality links. You need endorsements, but from credible places, and the algorithm accounts for all of this. Or think of it from a probability point of view. If, let's say, 29% of your clicks lead you to site A, then I know for sure at least another 29% lead to B since going to A must be followed by going to B. But you can also get to B from D, which will increase the probability beyond the 29% surpassing A's rank. Now let's say you start a blog introducing a new site to the graphic, then exchange links with some other low rank site such as C. Well, now all we gotta do is expand our matrix to a five dimensional one for five sites. Most entries will be zero in this case, but site C links to E, so we gotta change that column to have values of one third for each link. And then site E gives out one link, all its importance, to site C. This is good for site C because it's a meaningful link, but it won't help too much with rank because the link comes from E, a low rank site, thus not a quality link. After doing the calculations, these would be the ranks of each site. As expected, C's rank went up and is now tied with D, but it still hasn't come close to A or B yet. Now, after all this, there's a lot of the story still missing. I mean, if one site is completely isolated, all sites would be ranked zero, which makes no sense, and I didn't talk about how that's accounted for. There's also something called the damping factor, which I didn't mention since it complicates things. And what we've seen is the basics of what Google first implemented, but of course they've expanded a lot. So is this exactly how the current Google algorithm works? Of course not. I have no idea how it works, and I don't think really anyone does besides the people at Google who work on it. But overall, this is still the general idea of how Google ranks websites. There's of course a lot I couldn't get to, but if you want to learn more about this algorithm and you just enjoy this kind of applied math, I definitely recommend checking out Brilliant's Linear Algebra course, where they'll take you through the basics all the way to applications like the PageRank algorithm. And this section includes things I didn't have time to get to in this video, so you'll have more to look forward to learning. The course starts with all the basics if you're a beginner, so you'll learn vector spaces, linear transformations, determinants, and more. But they're also going to show you some of the more advanced topics and unique applications that you very likely didn't learn in an introductory course. Brilliant is a platform that contains dozens of math and science courses, ranging from high school math all the way to more advanced courses like differential equations or abstract algebra. But what I like about this site is that they incorporate those unique applications and interactive exercises as you go through any course, so you know you truly understand the concepts before moving on. So if you want to get started right now and support the channel, you can click the link below or go to brilliant.org slash majorprep. Plus the first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So again, links are below, and with that we're going to end that video there. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join the Major Prep Facebook group for updates on everything. Hit the bell if you're not being notified, and I'll see you all in the next video.